I just want to drop a real quick excerpt uh, in here. Um, I touched on this in the previous video, but I just wanted to jump in and shed a little light. Um, again, as I said in the other video, one of my co-workers, his hopefully soon-to-be father-in-law, uh, is a jig maker. So what he does is he's really big, and I'm big into saving the environment ecologically. Um, that's why I'm pretty much a catch-and-release fisherman. But, uh, you know, what he does is he goes around, he scrounges, and he finds old, uh, old lures, old weights. He actually has an entire setup in his uh, his own little studio where he grabs the old leads, he cleans them up, he melts them down, and he rejigs all the leads back into fresh fishing, uh, you know, fishing hooks and jigs. So his call is his little thing is called Black Widow Jigs. He does all custom powder coated paint systems. Um, he does really heavy gauge saltwater stuff. I think he does some lighter stuff for freshwater. And I just wanted to drop in uh, a great thank you to him and to, uh, you know, to George at, at Black Widow Jigs and to, uh, to Mark, the uh, step, soon-to-be stepson, uh, <laughs> uh, for, for hooking me up with, with some, of those, uh, some of these great jigs. And I'm going to hook up you with some of these great jigs. I'm going to throw a pair of jigs in some modest weights into that giveaway for Christmas in July so you guys can enjoy some of his handiwork. So these Black Widow jigs are in really high demand and in fact recently in Point Pleasant, New Jersey um, they've been slaying, slaying these jigs, have been slaying blackfish. Um, you in New England, you New Englanders might call them uh, tatag. We here in New Jersey we just call them blackfish. Um, but uh, yeah, man, they've been they've been slamming these things. They're in high demand, and it reminded me of a story in 2016, 2017. Uh, a YouTuber. I'll try to leave the link to his video in the description below. Uh, he was hitting these blackfish. They weren't using jigs at the time. Um, he does have videos of him jig fishing for for blackfish for Tatag, but uh, they were just bringing them up. And I think in the video that I recall, he had like an 18 pounder, maybe even more, and it was just. A monster for uh, for his area. It was Cape May that they were fishing, but uh, right now Point Pleasant, they're they're pulling them in left, right, and center on these Black Widow jigs. So uh, these are really a high quality product. And again, I hope whoever gets these in that giveaway is uh, is going to enjoy them. Maybe they got some deep water. They go out salt fishing uh, when they can. Again, I love the fact that it's economical, ecological, environmental, and it's a trade that is an art that I don't want to see go. I don't want to see it go away. Uh, lure makers, fly tires, uh, carvers, um, you know, it's something that in this world where everything's instant gratification, you pay a premium for quality products. And sometimes it's that little bit of time and effort and that premium price actually has more intrinsic value than something you can buy at the store. Uh, unfortunately for George, He's in high demand, so you know he goes out and and people sit on him and and want more and more of his jigs, and he's just one guy making these jigs, recycling the old leads, handcrafting them, pouring them, you know, polishing them up, sharpening the hooks, powder coating, oven baking all his powder coat, and it's a time-consuming process, a very labor-intensive process for one guy to do, and. He gets orders like, "Yeah, could you get 800 of these jigs?" And you know he just can't do that. Not not on his not on his scale. Um, maybe in some time in the future, God willing, he will be able to do that and upscale and be the next Norman Lures or Strike King or who knows. Um, but right now he's de dealing with some health issues. So you know, all my love and respect goes out to him and, and best wishes. So I hope he recovers. Uh, I hope he gets stronger, and I hope he succeeds in beating uh, the scourge that's attacking him. Um, it's not always promising. It is always a tough battle in any situation. Uh, but I think if uh, he puts his mind to it, positive reinforcement, positive thinking, uh, I'm, I'm 
hopefully he will survive. Whereas if you're a saltwater fisherman, I mean, he carries two ounce, two and a half ounce jigs. Um, if you're a freshwater person, he goes to half ounce, ounce. I think this one, here's a one ounce jig uh, in here. Really, really sharp. They're saltwater compliant, so even if you're a freshwater fisherman, you're not going to worry about these hooks rusting out. You know, and they are super, super sticky. You know, sticks to your nail, sticky hooks. Um, and again, like I said in the previous video, every eye is clear through. He's not one of those that just dips it in the power coat, throws it in, and blasts it in the oven, and then you'll have all this dried powder coat material, all this paint locked up in the in the eyelet, and you get these packages. His attention to quality is is excellent. So hopefully he'll get back to 100% soon, and uh, maybe in time we'll start seeing him in national chain stores. Uh, but for the time being, again, thank you very much, George. Thank you again, Mark. And uh, as always, from me to you, tight lines out there, everybody. And I will catch you on the next cast. Peace, hookaholics. I know it's lonely yet to tell. But that's not by speculation. But the position that I got, I climbed too high to fall, went too hard to drop. Stop.